So in terms of molecular mechanisms, there is insulin receptor mediated stimulation of T cells. And I would imagine that there is insulin receptor mediated stimulation of all of the other cells of our innate immune system. So for those who are watching on YouTube or um, visually, I'll pull up another chart, which is quite helpful for people. Um, you guys all know that when you listen to this podcast, you get to go to like, you get to go back to medical school with all of us. So this is the innate immune system. This is the adaptive immune system. And the innate immune system consists of cells, macrophages, dendritic cells, mast cells, basophils, eosinophils, neutrophils, and natural killer cells. Macrophages and dendritic cells are derived from the monocyte lineage. Uh, I think I have a whole uh, graphic of all of the lineages. And this is getting a little bit granular for people, but you can see there's a stem cell. It, the stem cell divides into either a myeloid progenitor or a lymphoid progenitor. This is where we get the term lymphocytes on the CBC. Lymphocytes can include things like natural killer cells or T cells and B cells. B cells canonically produce antibodies. T cells are subdivided into other classes, which we don't have to go into today, though we will talk a little bit about this as we wrap up the podcast. CD4 positive T cells, CD8 positive T cells, of the CD4 positive T cells, there are multiple types of T cells, including Treg, which we're going to talk about in the context of statins in a moment, uh, Th17, T helper 2, T helper 1, T helper 0. So that's all the adaptive immunity. And all the, on the other side here, this innate immunity is really what we're talking about with diabetics and the impairment. We have the myeloid progenitor um, going to mast cells, and then all these other cells, monocytes, dendritic cells, macrophages, eosinophils, basophils, neutrophils. The listener may have heard me talk about macrophage. This is probably a little too granular for this podcast, but this, this ability of macrophages to switch between M1 and M2 phenotypes, meaning activated and non-activated, is very interesting to me. And the context for this discussion previously has been in the setting of a lot of brain-derived macrophages, which are called microglial cells, and how they can switch from the M1 to M2 phenotype, meaning getting turned on, and we see neuroinflammation in the brain, but that's just a whole separate discussion. Anyway, I really think that it's, I think that there's very good evidence that insulin is going to be signaling in all of these cells. So just like that article, which I'll go back to in a moment, insulin is signaling in T cells tonically, insulin is also going to be a signal for all of these cells. And what we know, and you alluded to this, is that when we are insulin resistant, most of the cells of our body become insulin resistant. It's not just our liver or our muscles that become insulin resistant. I think that what we see in diabetes is that we have immune cell insulin resistance. And so this paper is just talking about how immune cells are signaling uh, in T cells during inflammation and infection. And you can imagine how in a situation of insulin resistance, if the T cell or the dendritic cell or the macrophage or the um, NK cell is insulin resistant, they're not going to respond as well in um, inflammation or infection. So I thought that was really fascinating and, and speaks to the idea that insulin resistance in people with COVID could be really bad because your immune cells can't respond to the virus because they're not hearing insulin. What do you think about that? I think that, yeah. So for people like, you know, talking about, you know, an aid and an aid and adaptive immune systems and things like that, like when I think of innate immune system, I think, you know, that's, you know, the, the virus isn't necessarily making me sick as far as like what I feel as being sick. My, my innate immune system fighting back from that is what is, is making me feel those symptoms of being sick, you know, the fever um, and whether it's a cough or, or whatever, you know, those symptoms of your body trying to fight it. And so I, I like to give people that visualization, like that's how much inflammation is going on, you know, in the context of when we, we contract some bacteria or virus. Um, and so that the very, um, the very nature of how our body fights a virus is going to make us a little resistant to insulin, I think. Um, and so if you've already got pre-existing resistance to insulin, it's just way worse.